Hi there. I've been away for a long time. One of the reasons I've been away for a long time is, well, there just aren't any wars, and I do things, well, with wars in mind. I test, I field test my stuff with wars in mind, and it becomes very, very difficult when, well, you don't have exactly have wars to test your stuff. So, for example, um, I have this, and we'll see the other half of this in a second. This is a Breach for any on Pro, 270 feet per second. Um, you got um, you you got the the you know the rifling unit on here, everything else, and it's it's using a um, an AT5 turf spring, which is really cool because this means that hey, this little pistol can throw a dart uh, oh about 180, 190 feet. That's pretty badass, and I mean just straight out, boom, you know. So at any rate, you may notice that this breach isn't in here today. And the reason it's not in here today is because there are people that have been working on stuff, that have been working on things, all that stuff. And as you know, I'm not the best cameraman in the world. I'm much more the personality in front of the screen, as everybody knows. Or being a pest on Facebook Messenger and, you know, pretending to be, you know, Charlton Heston. Why? Why? You maniacs! You blew it all up! Yeah, that's... I, I, I'm, I'm a fool. Sorry about that. Anyway. Um... So, anyway, there have been people like Nintendo who have been working on cool stuff. So I took this out, and I and I took this kit right here. This is a uh, Sweet Dart. Um, the Sweet Dart is like a, boom, a Boomco Dart, but it is different. And I will show you how different it is from a Boomco Dart, um, you know, kit. And he sent me this. And he sent me one for the Nexus Pro as well. I paid some money for it because I wanted to donate a little bit. He was going to send it for free, and I'm like, you sent me so much stuff for free. I got this to shoot around 200 feet per second with a number 60 Hillman. Okay, not a couple Hillmans put together like I do on the uh, Mark 13 because it's going more forward, of course. You need that for the buffer. But still, this is a 13 and a half kilogram spring at this length. And at shorter lengths, it's like 18 kilograms. So if you go shorter, it, it doesn't absorb as much between the... Uh, between the coils, and it's about 18. But of course, lately they've been around 16. They've been making them thinner, softer, but nonetheless, really cool stuff. So I put a little bit of fiberglass here on this, and this was a 3D printed breech. This is an SLS printed breech. And put in mind, I did not change the power plant on this. So the same power plant that's doing 270 feet per second with this setup is on here. Now, Another thing you have to understand is that the cross section of darts are thinner. That means when it goes through the air, it cuts through. Meaning for every foot per second, you get a foot. That's awesome. That's awesome. Around that. So I think it probably, I think, it got that spoon time. It probably starts diminishing by 300. It becomes like a three quarters of a foot, half foot, whatever. But it's still like, wow, you know. So anyway, can this thing prime 18.5 with this breech? Oh, it can. And then here we are, right here. Let me show you. So he made this this magazine, custom breech, whole nine yards, and these are the darts right here. They're just small little darts. They have little shape on the front, little eraser heads, and there's straws in the back. And what they do is they fly through a um, barrel that's, I believe it's uh, 13, 30 seconds. Yeah, 13, 30 seconds. Well, it's this small little barrel here. So it means it takes less air to fly through. Now, why is this important? Why do I support this? Because... Uh, smaller darts are going to be better f later on for long range. Look at Rival, for example. A Rival ball has so much drag that even with the power behind it, it's going to catch so much air, it's not going to go far. Um, I know the difference between, like, a Pack D dart and, let's say, a Waffle Headed dart. The Pack D dart's going to go farther because it has better uh, void coefficient. Same thing. It, it's, it's just, it's more aerodynamic, you know? You got this thing with the domes that's, that's diverting air around the foam, and you got this one that's catching the air as it's flying. So it's like the difference between, let's say, wad cutter and full metal jacket on real bullets. And, yeah, I can get I can get really fond of these. I can plant these with my better blasters, 230 feet, and just flat out of it, arch it a little, 250, 260. Imagine going to a war where people are playing with toys, and they can hit you from across the park with something freaking mean like this. Like this. I know. I still have it <laughs> on type AR, except this one's now it's a it's a slide breach. Okay, so I have a lot of interest in darts that better 
void coefficient. And the reason is, is because it cuts the air better. It's the future. I'm not just caring about the present. I'm caring about the future. And I think the future is smaller diameter darts for longer range. But I still think it needs a lot of work. It needs a lot more uh, attention. But at any rate, let's not... Look at that. Huh. That is a really hefty spring. This is the same spring setup that's in the Chronomag. The first ever Chronomag. Yeah, and you can see that one could do... Oh, three and a feet per second. So let's get through this on a chronograph and see what it does. All right, here we are. Here we go. We do not want to blast this at the, uh, at the LCD, of course. Let's see if we can get a read on it. 157. Hmm. Something tells me I could do better. Something tells me... Ah! Something else might do better. Let's see. Something tells me I to do a lot better. There we go, 171, and you heard that hit. Right. Now you have to put in mind the dots are smaller and everything else. Um, and also, uh, 171 feet per second with these things. I mean, no, that, that's a bombastic speed for Bimco because you have so much lighter drag. Also, these are heavier. I think these are about 1.3 grams, 1.4 grams. So they are heavier. That's 111. So what I'm seeing is it needs a little work on the consistency. Probably a little fine tuning, this and that. Maybe a little better dart sizing and maybe a little more airflow on the breech. Probably making it out of brass would do it because the airflow on it, it's small, but it's proficient for 200 feet per second wars, which is this is what it's designed for. To do walls in the 200 feet per second range. And I like it. So let me go to dot, pull it back, grab it like so. Let's do one more. They're also fairly accurate too. So I can imagine these really 153. Yeah, so I can imagine these really just wow, you know, really going going toward it. But where I had the most success was this blaster right here. This has got a, a number 62 mm in it at the moment. And uh, pretty good. I have been promising Boom Tendo for ages that I was going to do this with you. Oh man. It, and for some reason in this blaster it always errors. It gave me an error on this one. But I nailed the string without sight. I find that the Nexus Pro version is a little more accurate. And that the um, the boom the boom code designs actually differ in performance. See, I'm still getting error. They tend to favor the longer springs. This was also found when he did the longest range sniper shot ever, where he shot a dart, well documented anyway. He shot a dart about what was it? it was 278 feet, 279 feet? Yeah. And it was still the barrel because he didn't reinforce it. It went down. On these, he reinforced the barrels. He put 3D printed pots on here. Really cool. I'm finding that when I did get a read on this, I got these in the 200, 214 range, which is really good. I'm noticing that his darts don't like small little puffs, powerful puffs of air like the 50 caliber darts. And that's, this shows it. This shows it definitely. Um, it likes, even though the tube's the same, it's just the spring. I think it's the torque of the spring, maybe the spring balance, the fact that it's a little more compressed. Yeah, it goes faster. But I can't get a read off of it for reads, uh, I don't know. This one got a read every time. I don't understand why. I don't know if it's this front end being different or how it's flying through, but it's the same darts. And I, this will not read, no matter how much of that. I did like 10 takes of this once, and no idea. But I do know. I do know it's pretty good. Now, I don't go outside. It's COVID. Most people think, oh, COVID's no big deal. You don't have to get vaccinated. It's just the flu. No, I'm a germaphobe. I go outside and I feel dirty, okay? So I don't go outside. I haven't done that in a while. But I will tell you that I've seen these darts fly out of here. And it was doing somewhere around 160, 170 feet. Very impressive for 200 feet per second mod limits. The other thing is that these will meet your mod limits uh, your lower mod limits a lot better. So I go to a war, I take, let's say, a Boat of Prey. Well, you know, one of these deals. And I'm doing 280 feet per second with one of these deals. I either got to load three darts, go shotgun about 150 to 170 feet per second, 
or I gotta go to a war where they're shooting at 300 feet per second, because this will do about 280, 290 feet per second. That's an impressive piece, but I can't take this to a normal war. Too powerful, you know? But, like, for example, you're making the best out of a 200 foot per second movement. Why? Because you're gonna get the best aerodynamic coefficient. Do I think that it needs a little tinkering? Yes. Do I think that it, uh, that, that it is really cool, and I, do I think that 40 caliber is the future? It could be for snipers, but what it does the most is it makes the most of the air resistance, and that's why I think this is such a cool idea, and I hope he, he keeps going with this, and I hope he keeps designing this. Thank you, Nintendo, for, for giving me these kits. I now have one in, in Aeon Pro, and I have one in this. I'm going to buy another Aeon Pro for this, uh, so I can put my, my, two, my 270 foot per second uh, thing on here. But what am I? This is 180, okay, 170, 180 feet, okay, maybe 190, maybe 190, okay. Um, 200 feet per second, this will do close to, I would say, 160, 170, 180. So you really, it's less velocity, but it's more power, and the darts are more weighted, and that's why they go farther. So it's pretty cool. But I've been promising this video forever to them. Um, I'm really sorry, I just, I had a vitamin D deficiency. Oh yes, that was the other reason I had problems. I had a vitamin D deficiency where I had five points out of 60 on my vitamin D, and I, I was lethargic, it came out of bed. It was really tough, it was really tough. But um, here I am now. I didn't shave today, I just decided to be on here. Here I am now. I'm not dead, the channel's not dead. I, I'm still working on stuff. The next video, we're gonna be talking about because we're going to be talking about the Nerf Rival Vision and how I think in some ways it's better than, than running with, with two of these. And in some ways it's not. And, the, and, and I will tell you before the video, my first impression is it looks like a Dom staple gun, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So until next time, this is Chris Cartea saying don't you go changing I'll freaking find you. I'll try to spin this place. Ah, ah, ah. No, it doesn't work. I don't know why. I feel like just taking a piece of fiberglass and like rubbing that. It's just insane. I'm so used to doing this. You know, I'm, I'm so used to being a hot rod with my blasters. And even then I'm a goof and I drop it. Ah, and I almost fall over. Well, anyway, I better go before I destroy the place. So, take care. Toodaloo.